So two things happen when you're aimless. Okay, so the first is you get anxious. And the reason you get anxious is because anxiety computes aimlessness. So if you're if you drop someone in the middle of a desert, the reason they're anxious is because it's not because they don't know which way to go. It's because there are way too many places to go, right? Every direction. And that's aimlessness is like every direction beckons. That's way too complicated. And your brain literally signals that with anxiety. Okay, so that's so ang aimlessness and anxiety are the same thing, but it's worse. Your brain is set up to produce positive emotion. Literally, this is what the positive emotion system does. It computes decrease between you and a goal. So if you have a goal and you see that you've done something that moves you towards it, your brain produces a dopamine hit and that makes you feel good and it strengthens the neural circuits that moved you forward. It does both of those. That's reward and reinforcement. And what that means is if you don't have a goal, you have no positive emotion. Mm. And when people say, you know, they're aimless, they're, they're partly telling you that they're anxious, but they're also telling you that they have no positive emotion. So then you say, well, what sort of goal should you have? Because that's the next question, right? And the answer to that is, well, ask yourself. And this future authoring program that I set up, it helps you do that. It's yeah. like, okay, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Maybe this isn't true, but maybe it is. You can have what you want in five years, but there's two conditions. You have to know what it is and you have to aim at it, okay? Okay, so let's say you're willing to play that game. Might be wrong, because who knows, you're gonna get run over by a bus tomorrow, but you know, you're gonna play the game. Okay, now the next step is, all right, you probably wanna have an intimate relationship. Now, maybe not, but probably, but assuming you do, Imagine, mm -hmm. pretend like you're a kid. You get to have an intimate relationship. What does it look like? What does it look like when your wife greets you when you come home from work? What does your sex life look like, right? What do you do for entertainment? How do you treat each other? You need a fantasy, just like a little kid playing house, right? Figure out what you want, write it down. Figure out what you could do to start moving towards that, okay? Do that with your family relationships. Do that with your friendships. Mm. Do that with your career. Do that with your education. Think about your misuse of alcohol and drugs and other things that might drag you down. If you want to drink, it's like, you want to be a bumbling Barney Gumble idiot? Like, you want to drink? Okay, what do you mean by that exactly? How often? How much is too much? How are you going to constrain that and why? Develop a vision. And you have to do that in dialogue with yourself, right? It's like, if I could have what I wanted, what would satisfy me? And you might think, well, I could never get that. And I could say, well, maybe not, but I'll tell you one thing, man. You can move towards it. And I know that everyone who knows the underlying neuroscience knows this. Almost all the pleasure is in the moving toward. Yeah. So even, you know, you don't want to set up a, so, a goal that's so high that there's just no possibility that a schlub like you could ever manage it. But God only knows what your upper limit is, you know. But, but if you set up a goal that you think is you know, just on the edge of conceivability, then every time you move even a tiny bit towards that, you're gonna think, good work, man, good work. You get a little kick from that. Yeah. You get a little stronger from that. And that works like a charm. Real. Yeah, Yeah. you bet, you bet. Um, An end of aimlessness. The end of aimlessness. That's the desert in Exodus, hey? When, when the Egyptians leave the Pharaoh, mm -hmm. they leave tyranny, right? And everybody thinks, oh my God, we're out of tyranny. Now it's freedom, everything's great. That isn't what happens. They go into the desert, they're aimless, they're slaves. They have no capacity for self-governance. They have no vision of their own. Mm. They leave the tyranny and now they're somewhere worse. They're out in the aimless desert. And part of the reason people like tyranny, even their own, is because they don't want to be aimless in the desert. It's why some people go back to prison. Absolutely, absolutely. It's why the after the Soviet Union collapsed, it's why so much of the population was nostalgic for Stalin. You bet. It's also why Lot's wife, Lot, there's a story of Lot's wife when Sodom and Gomorrah are mm -hmm. destroyed, she looks back. God turns her into a pillar of salt, right? You don't look back. When you escape somewhere terrible, you don't look back and long to be there, but it means you have to develop a new vision. Right, if you don't develop a new vision, then you can, You part of you will look back just because you wanna have some yeah. organization. Your brain wants to have organization. Some direction, Right. that's right, that's right. You'll take, here's another rule. This is a terrifying rule. If you don't provide yourself with direction, mm -hmm. you will take direction from a tyrant. Yeah. Right. 
Right. So, and you might say, well, why should I take responsibility? You asked that, you know, it's like, yeah. I'm afraid of my own goals because of the responsibility. It's like, well, you're either going to be responsible to yourself or you're going to be responsible to a tyrant or you're going to be absolutely lost. That's your option set. Yeah. yeah right. That, that's it. Yeah, bet. Ty pick, tyr that, pick one. Tyranny, slavery, or something approximating visionary self-determination.